go. Now right hand, left hook. You gotta learn how to shift that body. There you go, shift that body. Back with the right hand, left hook. In this up and coming part of the city, one man's legacy through blood and sweat is now another man's labor. The job has been physical. In wire and clay. I come in here, uh, can't wait to get to work, and I'm inspired every day. Taking shape in Fishtown is the long-awaited, much-anticipated statue of boxing legend Smokin' Joe Frazier. Now, for the first time, we have a glimpse at the man and his maker. You're looking at probably the quintessential moment in his career where he knocks down Ali with a great left hook. And Frazier treats it as if it's just a day in the life. He walks away, goes back to his corner, no big deal. That, I thought, was a real character. Having the power of a legend dropped in your hands is daunting. But for Stephen Lane, it was a challenge he had to confront. I don't usually seek out commission work. I've done mostly gallery work. When this came about, I started hunting for it. I wanted to do this. This is something I thought was authentic to, to me and something I could relate to and really do. These are wood tools that I make myself. Lane's process started months ago, utilizing photographs, sketches, and plenty of advice. Here, this, he just looks like a lion to me. He's like a great, great profile. So that's a profile I focused on a lot on the, on the piece. There are different expressions. He doesn't always look mean and bad, you know, he looks like, you know, someone open, wide-eyed, you know, interested, enthusiastic. So I uh, try and get a lot of those elements all at once. Today, his work stands nearly 10 feet tall, a remarkable likeness of the meat cutter with a ferocious left hook. Would I like to spar with Joe? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> I'd rather spar with Ali than Joe. I think it'd be less painful overall. <laughs> This former boxer, now turned artist, was just four years old when Fraser's left hook knocked Ali to the canvas at Madison Square Garden. He now stands eye to eye with his hero, pouring his heart and soul into this bronze masterpiece. So you often set the eyes a little deeper, just a little deeper. Than they his passion for detail is evident with each cut and scrape. Working the corners with skill and the acquired knowledge of the champ. Joe Frazier, when he was young, was in an accident on a farm uh, where his elbow got damaged by uh, a hog that they had on the farm. And they didn't go to a doctor at the time and it healed kind of bent. He was never really able to fully straighten that arm. And consequently, it made for a fantastic left hook. For Lane, there are a few more rounds to go. He's proud of his work and has a good feeling about his nearly 2,000 pound tribute going the distance and giving Philadelphia and boxing fans everywhere what they deserve. There's something about his approach that was all out willing to go forward and to get beat up to win. It has to feel like a public monument out there. That when you look at it from a hundred yards away, you have immediate impact. And then when you get close to it, it still works, it still holds up. As a monument for a city, it has to be a great thing all by itself. In his studio off Marlboro Street, sculptor Stephen Lane has endured some restless nights. Uh, I feel older. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I feel very 15th round at this point. But months after that first scrape of the knife and that first molding of clay, Lane is precisely where he wants to be. There was never a doubt in my mind. I knew I would get it uh, and 
I knew that it was a matter of just how much I was willing to break my own self down to do it. His work of legendary boxer Joe Frazier now enters that next stage. The iconic image towering more than 10 feet tall and has already caught the eye and captured the hearts of boxing fans around the world. The reception has been big, more than I expected. And um, I get a similar response over and over. People come into the room and they go, damn. This is a nice level or a nice range of finish. Inside this second floor loft, Lane has just completed the heavy work. This catches and holds light uh, really nicely. The sculptor now becomes a painter of sorts. I'll do this all day, I'll keep rotating. Fluid strokes and detailed brushes help define this legend's likeness. It's a lot of knowledge of anatomy and exactly how things, things work, how that leg is working. Public reaction has been overwhelming and Lane has received some important feedback from a solid source. Out of the blue, I got a call from legendary boxing writer Stan Hockman who was very nice, but he wanted to tell me that in 1971, uh, in Madison Square Garden, there was a no facial hair rule for the boxers, and take a look again at the photographs, which I did, and I thanked him, looked at them, and he's right, no beard on Joe in 1971. And the beard is gone now. Over the next few rounds of his life-changing project, Lane will go back to his corner, lend support, encouragement, and a guiding hand, preparing Smokin' Joe for his next step forward. In a few days, the foundry people I'm working with uh, said jokingly, you don't want to be here for this. And what they mean is they're going to take the arms off, they're going to take the head off, and lay them out on tables and start covering them in rubber and plaster to make molds for the bronze casting. Uh, so that's my process in the next several months is to oversee the whole foundry process. Are you nervous about that? I'm not at all. I know I'm in good hands, but, uh, well, okay, I'm a little nervous. <laughs> you, know, you always are, but I know they know what they're doing. never a doubt in my mind. It's ready to go. This is the Phoenix phase of the process. Throughout this disorderly scattered mess, the fragments of one man's vision are coming together quite impressively. This is the left shoulder. This is the head, this is where the head uh, was and it will go back together. This is the belt, this is the front of the belt. They're the bits and pieces of Stephen Lane's visual journey, the long-awaited tribute to Philadelphia boxing legend Joe Frazier. The process has been a rewarding one and now Lane's final punches are being landed. He will rise again uh, in a much more permanent and beautiful material splash coat of plaster and plaster mother mold pieces on top. Lane's story is a process of building and molding only to be broken down again before they're finally cast forever. Bronze caster Shane Stratton is honored to lend both hands and 50 hour work weeks to Lane's pursuit of history. I, I think it's really really rare for someone to make a sculpture that's as powerful as this artistically and also as a representation of an athlete. We studied classical and art, you know, Greek and Roman art as, as art students and you often see athletes from that period that are so powerful, like there's a, the Terme boxer in Rome. Yeah. This is like that. 
This exhaustive, year-long process has been an artist's revelation. While working closely with Frazier's family and others close to the boxing legend, Lane realized that this monumental task has become his ultimate one. I feel responsible. I think that's a lot of what I feel. I want to understand what people want to see uh, and then put it through myself and decide how I feel inspired about it and give everything I can to make this the best. He continues working out of respect for what the boxing world expects and how his towering statue will forever connect with the Frazier family. My name is Wita Collins. I am the fifth child of the late, great Smokin' Joe Frazier. I was amazed. I was shocked because I didn't think it was going to be so huge. And the way that Steve captured his stance and his arms and the left hook, I was just, I was floored. I almost started to cry because I was like, wow, this is really finally happening. But I was also a little sad because he's not here to see it happen. The artist has poured his heart and soul into every last detail. But the last crucial step is one he can't pour. One level below his Fishtown studio begins one of the final and arguably most beautiful parts of the process. An introduction into the Bronze Age. They probably brought it up to about 2200 initially and then they let it cool down. They're very specific about the temperature within 10 degrees. And like a fighter a few days before a bout, Lane now needs time to polish and refine. On completion, Frazier's likeness will stand as a reminder to all those who stood by a man who fought from the heart, landing a knockdown with that ferocious left hook to capture a world title for the working man. For individuals to have their own dreams, when they see this, they can say, you know what, if Joe Frazier could have done it, a man from Beaufort, South Carolina, and come to New York and then move to Philadelphia, I can follow my dreams. Until then, a city waits. To me, it's never done. You simply run out of time and energy. Joe Frazier left us a left hook legacy, and that got passed on to me as a sculptor to create this piece, and I am passing this on to Philadelphia as a legacy for them. It takes a lot of mental energy. I feel older. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I feel very 15th round at this point. Yes, I'm quite glad it's finished. I couldn't get enough of it while I was working on it, and then I got really, really done. <laughs> Our heroes often emerge from deep in the shadows, capturing the elusive light of a great moment. I hope that it's inspirational. Most times our heroes are held in reverence, in such high regard. 
I wanted it to feel like Philadelphia. We lead them to the pedestal. It, it can be hard to comprehend that I did it and that it's done. Bathe them in a glistening finish. We are good. And then present them for all the world to see. There is a level to it that's unreal. The sculptor will look back on this imposing figure as a life's mission, celebrating someone else's lifetime achievements. I want people to look at it and get some of what Joe Frazier was about and, and get that same feeling about themselves. Wow, huge, phenomenal. Family and friends will forever cherish this honor and hold it close to their hearts. A lasting tribute to a man with a heart of gold. I never saw him refuse anybody that needed anything. And uh, he was just a great, a great, a great person. And he, was not, he never got mad at anybody. He got mad at Ali a little bit, but uh, that was why they being insulted. And, uh, but, but he was just a, a good guy, a nice guy to be around. Success, accomplishment, also gratitude. If he was here today, he would be wow. He would be able to say, okay, they got it done. Nice, nice job. <laughs> With one swing of his fist, Philadelphia embrace Smokin' Joe Frazier. Now gone, Frazier's spirit can connect with the fans of this city and beyond. Through his hand, an artist's vision, along with a lot of sweat and an enormous amount of love, Smokin' Joe will forever stand tall and never leave us. His famous words were, get the job done, and we finally got it done. It's part of my bucket list. I wanted this statue made, and uh, it's perfect. And I think the public will love it. I think they'll be able to say, finally, this is a wonderful thing that it's done, and I'm grateful. It took 15 rounds and one left hook to capture a world title. It took a little more than 15 months between a man and his maker to secure this left hook legacy. There was never a doubt in my mind. I knew I would get it uh, and I knew that it was a matter of just how much I was willing to break my own self down to do it.